Hello all. So uh, we will welcome you all on behalf of Unite. So uh, this uh, today we are meeting here to uh, release of work from home document. So we have created a white paper on uh, work from home, the problem faced by employees in work from home, and a model uh, law, an outline of model law uh, to uh, demand for. It. Because uh, the uh, context behind this is, NASCOM has uh, continuously working towards and lobbying the government for enacting a law specifically uh, which favors employers. And it is so regressive that those laws are uh, almost in line with modern slavery. And we have to oppose that. To oppose that, we need a, a material, we need strong uh, documents, evidences, and uh, uh, demands to counter NASCOM's argument and demand employees' rights in favor of employees' interest. So as part of that, we, have, uh, we are now uh, putting forward a white paper, which uh, for the last three days, office bearers of Unite explained section by section in multiple videos. And uh, uh, I'll, uh, today, uh, those, uh, the document will be released by Comrade Hemlata, president of uh, CITU, and uh, uh, she'll be uh, talking to us on how to, an approach to, uh, what would be the approach, what would be the ideal approach for employees to win their rights in this work from home uh, problems uh, coming forward. So to give up a brief outline about the uh, work from home white paper document. Uh, so this document will be available shortly in uh, Unite website and also uh, in the chat we will circle it. So this document uh, talks about first on what is work from home, uh, a brief context on uh, historical context of work from home. Then it deals about what are the merits of work from home for the employees and what are the demerits of work from home for the employees and followed by what are the demands of employers, what NASCOM demands to government, what Gartner says. So the uh, perspective of uh, capitalist or the uh, global uh, multinational corporations on what they are looking for in the uh, work from home, uh, out of work from home. Uh, and uh, followed by that, we, we have compiled a list of demands in uh, uh, what, what we think would be the ideal rights uh, we should have the employee should have in the work from home condition. And it is uh, primarily uh, 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 modeled out of the Argentine, Argentinian uh, remote work law. So uh, these are the major sections of uh, the work from home white paper. And uh, we have uh, added evidences of survey we have conducted among employees, followed by uh, the Argentinian work from home and references to which we are uh, quoting from. So this is the outline of uh, work from home white paper, and it will be available uh, post uh, once uh, Comrade Hemlata releases it in the website. So uh, uh, now I request Comrade Hemlata to release the uh, work from home document and uh, give an uh, address on the approach employees should uh, take to win out their rights in work from home. Comrade, over to you. Thank you, Comrade Wilkin. Uh, I congratulate Unite, first of all, for releasing Am I audible? Yes, comrade. So first of all, I congratulate uh, UNITE for making the efforts to study the impact of work from home and understand uh, the various implications of work from home and compiling this white paper and releasing it. And also they have conducted a survey before this uh, to understand this. And also, I uh, congratulate them for uh, this uh, uh, attempts to make the IT employees about the organization, how to organize, how to face these challenges. So first, so this is uh, the thing that the uh, UNITE deserves. Congratulations. And then uh, I think work from home is not just uh, limited to the IT employees. Work from home is now uh, extended to many different sectors, other sectors also, 
We see even bank employees, accounts, legal services, health, education, so many things, particularly in the background of COVID, we find that the teachers are working from home because uh, schools are closed and uh, students have to take online lessons. Doctors are working from home for limited, of course, not uh, totally. So the accountants, lawyers, and many other things are there. So your effort has been to study the impact on confined section of the IT employees. And I have read the document. Uh, you have included the strengths, what you call about work from home, whether the, the benefits uh, of the work from home, what will be the adverse impact of the work from home, what will be the impact on the employers, what are the demands of the employers, what will be the impact on employees, etc. And uh, this, I think, needs to be understood in a broader perspective, in the impact of technology, because work from home is not just uh, uh, the major issue, it is the utilization of the existing technology. The, your uh, uh, paper says about the historical, this background also, and also in different countries, uh, what is the impact? To say some countries, they are, mm, the rules are favorable to the employer, employees. The, in some countries, it is not. If NASCOM, uh, the, their demands are uh, implemented then it will be almost slave-like conditions for the IT employees, et cetera. So only, not only the impact, I think the entire thing or the impact of technology on the employees uh, and as part of that, so this uh, work from home, we have to examine. To so say technology has uh, actually created this condition, has enabled that workers or the employees need not come to a particular office or a particular workplace, they can do it uh, from their homes or for that matter, from any place. If you have a computer or a setup, then internet, et cetera, then you can work from anywhere, need not be home also. So that type of thing is created by the technology, the advanced technology. But the main thing is the impact will depend on in whose hands is the technology? Who is controlling the technology? Because we, uh, I have read the survey also and your report also. There are some, it says that uh, it may be uh, helpful for women. You will have some more time you can spend with the family and uh, uh, this uh, flexible work hours, particularly women or anybody who has the responsibilities to take care of uh, the family members, either uh, old parents or young children, etc., etc. That is one aspect you can send, spend more uh, time on uh, recreation or entertainment, etc. Your commuting time will come down, so that will be. It's, all these things are the impacts, but why we have to understand the who controls this technology because whoever controls the technology only they will decide how it will be used for what it will be used that is not only about work from home not only about uh, this uh, internet whoever controls the technology they will use it for their own uh, advantage or for their own benefit so the main question is who will use, we may demand, we may demand many things, but ultimately it will be in the control of those who own the technology. And in this society, whether the employees own the technology or whether it is the employers who own the technology, who control the technology, because ultimately it will be they who will be dictating terms, unless, unless, the employees or the workers, they have, uh, they are able to challenge, they are able to question, challenge, and then ultimately assert what they want. And that comes through organization. So that comes, it is not that without organization, 
you cannot uh, whatever we may say that this is the advantage or that is the disadvantage and you may have a charter of demands and uh, you will uh, place it before nascam before the government whatever it is but ultimately it will depend upon how strong we are and our strength depends upon our unity our togetherness our organization so what will be the impact on this organization if we want to have a demand we want to uh, uh, ne negotiate with the employers with the nascom or anybody for that matter how do we negotiate first is whether they will hear you whether the government will hear you today what we are looking at today you are saying about the survival conditions and all these things whether they have to do this they have to do this if they give a proper computer or the uh, what will be the impact on the ergonomy the um, tables etc etc so many other demands are also there if certain demands like travel allowance or other things are withdrawn maybe you will get some other uh, benefits all these things are there but ultimately how do we get it and what the government is doing today whether the government is ready to accept or uh, agree to the demand concede the demands of nascom or whether the government will be willing to concede our genuine demand demands of the it employees what is the experience of the it employees and what is the experience of the working class in general whether the experience of it employees you know yourself that a few years back it employees were not even considering themselves as employees they were considering themselves as professionals and they were not ready to even organize they didn't feel the necessity of coming together and negotiate with the employers they felt that even as individuals they can negotiate with the employers but that situation as it changed today it employees are getting organized it is through their own experience that they understood the need or the importance of collective strength the need to come together when there was retrenchment when the industrial disputes act and other legal provisions they were not being implemented when wages were not raising the benefits were being cut down etc etc there are so many problems i am not going into those problems you know better but this is not the situation of only it employees alone today particularly in the wake of this now you see the in uh, uh, the three labor codes have been passed in the parliament earlier the wage code bill, uh, bill was passed it has become an act and now the other three even when the opposition was not there in the uh, parliament in parliament in the absence of opposition without any proper discussion in parliament the acts were passed and uh, the farmers are struggling you all know you have expressed your solidarity to the farmers also and uh, they they the farm bills the three farm bills they were passed without giving an opportunity for the mps uh, to raise their or to vote the right to demand division that was not accepted and they were expelled and they were suspended from the uh, parliament and in their absence it uh, it was passed these three uh, bills were passed so how the government is going at and in the case of farm bills they are saying there were no discussions there is no proper discussion with the farmers representatives or in the uh, parliament etc but in case of labor courts there was discussion opposition mps raised their voice in parliament but outside also the government has several times they have invited the Uh, uh, um, uh, trade union representatives, the union representatives, workers' representatives, they have clearly expressed their opposition. Clause by clause, also they have given what are their ob objections and what they want, etc. And amendments to the these labor codes, they are just earlier also there were attempts to amend the labor laws. So the BJP government has codified them, but all these changes. the trade unions including the trade union which is with the 
BJP, his sister organization, the BMS, the entire working class has opposed that. Despite that wide opposition, they have gone on strike. The uh, uh, trade unions have gone on strike. Increasing number of workers are participating in the strikes. But despite all that, the government has passed. So what does that indicate? As you say, if the NASCOM's uh, recommendations or their demands are accepted, the employees will be pushed back uh, into uh, earlier centuries, servile conditions. That is the same thing with the workers. If this industrial relations, uh, code on industrial relations, if that is implemented, the government has uh, issued the rules also for all these things. And uh, probably the uh, labor minister said that by December, they want to implement, if not December, by next year, early, they will start implementation. So what, what, what does it become? Means it, it will be difficult to form trade unions. It will be difficult to protest. It will be almost impossible to go on a strike. And without that, what rights, even if the rights are there on paper, the rights are diluted. Even the social security code, social security benefits are diluted. It is not, uh, these codes are not meant to increase the coverage of workers. As it is, the coverage of uh, labor laws in our country is very less. But now this is not going to in increase the coverage. It is going to further reduce the coverage. Employers will have the right to hire and fire. So the standing orders that will not be applicable to uh, up to 300 workers, the establishments having up to 300 workers. Now it is 100. So all these dilutions are there, but even those will not be, even whatever benefits are there, without an organization, without organized struggles, the working class, the employees have not achieved anything till now. That is our experience. So that is being further diluted. That is being attacked today, the right to organize. So this is the attitude of the BJP government. This is the character of the BJP government. We all know from whom they are working. It is they are working for the employers, for the investors. Their objective is clear. It is to uh, 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 make the business, doing business is, ease of doing business, to improve the ease of doing business, to climb the ladder of ease of doing business, that is there. So by doing that, by attacking the workers, by removing the rights of the workers, by curtailing the benefits of the workers and employees, they think that investment will come and that investment will create jobs. So they are trying to in a way deceive the people because there is widespread employment, all these things uh, will facilitate employment generation. So when we talk about all these things, we have to understand the broader framework of government policies. It is part, work from home is part of this, helping ease of doing business, invest, attracting investment in the name of generating employment. So whether this is generating employment, there are several studies. ILO studies are there and other expert studies are there where it says that it is not uh, the uh, amendment of labor laws, amending the labor laws and uh, curtailing the rights of the workers that is not going to attract investment. Investment will be attracted only when there is a market for that. So even now investment is not coming and whatever investment is coming, it is not generating employment, new employment unless the government uh, in, except in the public sector. So it is mainly to benefit the capitalist class to the employer's class that these things are being made. So the government is more inclined to, uh, and it will accept the demands of NASCOM and other employers to attack. And why work from home? Why these things? What will be the major danger is that by confining people to their homes or places, preventing them from coming together, 
then they are want to curtail. In, in addition to curtailing their cost of uh, uh, establishments, all those things are there. Establishment cost will be reduced. They want to reduce that. All these things are there. But the major thing what we think in the CITU is that they want to curtail the uh, opportunity of the employers to come together and organize. That will be the major thing. So without that, sitting in your own home, there may be some comfort, there may be some benefits, but ultimately in the uh, long run, it will not be that these, uh, even to protect the existing employees, uh, existing benefits, even to protect the existing working conditions, kind of wages or other benefits, there should be some uh, organization. As you know, as you have realized you, yourselves and you have come together. So that is what, again, they want to attack by isolating, by preventing the employees from coming together so that it, you cannot share your feelings, you cannot share your ideas. You may say that even internet or uh, this communication technology is there, WhatsApp or other social media platforms, we can share, share our feelings. But just uh, uh, two days back, we had a meeting of um, the WFTU, the World Federation of Trade Unions, and uh, taking the experience hall, it was an online meeting because of the situation. And there the understanding of the WFTU, which was clearly explained by the president of the WFTU is that we can't change things through computers only. And we can't express, we can't share our views without eye contact, without coming together, looking at each other and facing each other, uh, understanding so many things. It is not just by typing or uh, by sharing something that we can fully express ourselves. And that is very much required one-to-one -one contact, discussions, uh, sharing, that is what required for organization. And that is what they want to curtail. There will be other uh, disadvantages. I'm not going into that. Your uh, paper also explains about that, how psychologically it will impact and how your privacy uh, will be compromised because you, you don't, that, that limit will not be there your private space and your workspace, that will be blurred. So all these things are there. But in addition to that, the, this is the main thing that you cannot explain, uh, express yourself, you cannot share your feelings, you cannot uh, um, argue, discuss and all these things in, uh, directly. That will prevent and that will curtail the organization. And without organization, we cannot assert our rights. We cannot uh, means if the attacks come, existing benefits also cannot be protected and no question of getting any more benefits. That is the experience of the working class. That is the experience of the working class in uh, India and in other countries also, wherever. So it is not that in Argentina, the government is giving some benefits or in other country, they are giving some benefits. There may be different historical developments, the different organizational uh, situations of the employees and different uh, social backgrounds and the background of uh, the struggles of different forces, et cetera, et cetera. So, the, so many things will depend, but ultimately the entire thing, because the capitalist, capitalist system is in crisis today, that what we need to understand is that the capitalist system is in crisis today since 2008, when you started thinking about organization because of the capitalist, global capitalist crisis, which reflected on the IT sector also, from then on, you have been thinking and you have been coming together and different unions have been formed in Karnataka, in Tamil Nadu, and at the All India level in West Bengal, etc., Telangana, uh, these states. So this is the time, and but that crisis has not uh, uh, gone away. It is still continuing and on that background, in the pre-existing economic crisis, this COVID attack has come and utilizing what is more heinous, what we have to means, what is appalling is that the governments in many countries, particularly in our country, they are utilizing this situation as a, 
uh, you have quoted something else about Amitabh Khan, but he is the person, the CEO of Niti Ayo, who said that this is an opportunity now or never. We have to grab it. We have to snatch it and then implement the reforms. What type of reforms? The reforms is one privatization for the, they have uh, stressed their focus is on privatizing elimination of the entire public sector, labor law reforms, and the agricultural reforms. So these, all these things they are utilized. They have been trying from uh, before also, but in, during this period, they are going ahead with labor law. They have passed the labor codes. They have passed the farm codes, changing the entire agriculture in our country. So these, they are this uh, long term when people cannot come out, people cannot protest seriously. Of course, people are coming out and protesting, which is creating difficulties for them. And that was the response. So we have to grab it and we have to implement, take forward this remote. If we don't do it now, we will not be able to do it for long. At least whether never or not, their idea is now or never, now or never situation. So in this situation, if we have to address the difficulties of work from home, we need to understand the entire situation and our efforts have to be directed to push back these policies as well. Without doing that, only confining ourselves to the demands related to work from home, I think will not be able to uh, face the attacks, will not, we, we will not succeed in facing these attacks because it is only a part of the total attack of the capitalist class on the employees. So uh, IT sector, it is work from home. It's not only uh, extending work from home here. They said that up to 2021, uh, sometime uh, work from home has to be extended. But in other uh, sectors also that is being done. So they want to make it a more or less as uh, much as possible, uh, as um, wider as possible. So this is part of that because of the neoliberal uh, reforms, which they want to push, because you know, they are aimed, the neoliberal policies, the policies of the, when they are in crisis, when the capitalist system is in crisis, neoliberal reforms are part of the efforts of the capitalist class to address the crisis, which started earlier in the 1970s. Since then they have been trying, but now neoliberal reforms, this type of reforms of privatization, all these things, they have been discredited in almost everywhere in the uh, world, but in our country, they are being followed the, by the BJP more zealously, more aggressively. So this is a, First, we have to understand that this is an attempt by the capitalist class to protect their profits and amass wealth. You know very well, probably you have seen that during this period, the uh, dis uh, disparities, income disparities have widened. On the one hand, particularly uh, those like Amazon, etc., those who are dealing with this uh, uh, internet, etc., or uh, uh, this, uh, what to say, online dealings, their wealth has increased several times, while large number of people have been pushed into poverty, joblessness, unemployment, etc. So this is increasing. So they want to amass wealth, they want to protect their profits, and what is the only thing their uh, solution is to increase the attacks on the working class. And because the working class will not uh, accept these things without a fight, and their only weapon to fight is their organization, they are attacking the organized. They are attacking the organized, the trade unions, the right to organize, right to go on struggles, right to strike, etc. also are being attacked. And without that, will not be able to protect. So that link we need to understand everywhere you can see that. So, but at the same time, what uh, another angle is that the working class is not lying down. 
now will be uh, the 2020 uh, year that will that is going to come to an end what is the experience of 2020 2020 in our country started with the general strike on 8 january and after that soon after in march the country wide lock lockdown was announced but despite that we have seen how the workers of different sections have come together to fight against these policies the coal workers lakhs of them almost it was a total strike for three days complete strike to uh, prevent this uh, commercial mining the uh, auction of the coal mines they have uh, struggled and in uh, petroleum workers have struggled we have seen how the migrant workers have been impacted by this and they're uh, marching them but even then the government did nothing and in during the lockdown lakhs and lakhs of workers the struggle started from their homes bhashan nahi ration do we don't want lectures we want food with that it started and gradually developed from the balconies and in you know, inside houses on the rooftops they have come to the doorsteps out of the doors onto the streets and now they have come to near delhi and it is not only the workers, workers of different sections, unorganized workers, organized workers, private uh, industrial workers in private uh, industries, in the clusters, against the promises uh, in uh, uh, non-implementation of the promises made by the government against retrenchment or payment of salaries, etc. Again, cutting of their wages, etc. Similarly, now the farmers are also coming. The government is trying to uh, uh, divide, create confusion. The government on the case of workers, they are saying that the workers uh, will actually be benefited. It will cover wide sections of workers. So only a few workers are going on strike. The trade unions are creating, they are called anti-Naxal, I mean, uh, Naxals, uh, uh, urban Naxals or anti-development, uh, anti-national Pakistani, whatnot. And the uh, peasants, when they have come together, they are saying it is only a demand of uh, Punjab farmers or Haryana. Initially, they said it is only Punjab. No Haryana uh, peasants are coming. Now it is, they are saying it is only Punjab and Haryana. It is not uh, the, the concern of the uh, peasants in other states. Now they call them Khalistanis. They said they are uh, supporting uh, Pakistan and China are supporting the farmers. Then now they are calling it is in the hands of the left and extremists, terrorists, everything. So despite that, the number of farmers who are coming to Delhi is increasing. But in the other places also, in Karnataka, in Tamil Nadu, in uh, uh, Maharashtra, and in other states also, Rajasthan, where uh, farmers are coming increasingly into the streets, increasingly they are coming to Delhi despite the cold. Today, uh, the minimum temperature in Delhi was uh, around three or so in some places and uh, four or five. Still, they are, they are on the open. So the struggles are also continuing. Now we see the end, 2020 started with the general strike and it has ended. 2000, I mean, uh, November 26th, workers strike. From November 26th, 27th, farmers Delhi Chalo. More than 500 farmers organizations are united. Initially, it was All India uh, Kisan Sangharsh Coordination Committee comprising around 200 farmers organization. Now some more farmers uh, organizations have joined. Now they have formed the Kisan, Sanjukta Kisan Morcha. So around 500 organizations. Uh, these uh, uh, workers organized trade unions, 10 central trade unions, and almost all the industrial federations, they have come together. And now these workers and peasants organizations, they together are synchronizing and organizing their struggles. So on the one hand, there are attacks, but on the other, we see the struggles are also increasing and the support and solidarity are increasing. And this not only from the traditional these things, as uh, we have seen, IT employees, you all have extended solidarity to the strike and also to the farmers that are contributing financially to the farmers' struggles. 
in many other sectors which are not part of the struggles earlier they are also coming into struggles so this is the situation in this situation what we need to understand what i think the it employees also uh, need to understand and need to popularize is that our demands particularly because we are discussing about work from home work from home is not confined to it employees its objective is to utilize technology in for the benefit for the amassing of the employers for the profit maximization of the employers so ultimately who controls the technology matters it is not who uses we are using the technology but who controls the technology for whose benefit that is the thing and this is a policy of the uh, present a part of the neoliberal policies for overcoming the crisis of the capitalist system but they have proved to be a failure neoliberal policies were not able to address in fact capitalist system itself has failed to address the basic problems of humanity whether it is illiteracy whether it is hunger whether it is poverty whether it is ill health whether it is employment any problem of the common people despite the production of so much wealth it is not a dearth of wealth there is wealth there are opportunities but because the technology the uh, um, uh, productive implements or the productive things the uh, implements are controlled by the few they are amassing they are using it for their benefit so this is the crisis of the system we have to take it head on so we have to while fighting definitely we have to fight on our charter of demands we have to first understand the uh, implications of work from home which you are trying to do and i think you need to go in more details about that because uh, 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 there are different maybe if you can go uh, among more people more uh, views will come about the impact of the work from home uh, uh, what are the difficulties also will come even uh, there is a this thing that women uh, think that it is beneficial to them but i have talked to several women but they were also not happy they say the burden is more and the domestic pressures also will be more and recently there was a survey during this period when people were working from home or when they were confined to home the uh, incidence of domestic violence has also increased so with further uh, uh, in depth analysis we may understand more but at the same time uh, even if the employers Sorry, provide Yeah. Yeah. so uh, what we need to understand that it is not the direct impact direct impact will be there but at the same time this organization there will be other impact force i will tell you i will let you know uh, i will let you know uh, so uh, these things we have to understand and we have to explain to the uncles we have to create the awareness also because we have to understand what will come in future today the struggles the spontaneous struggles will be there the spontaneous feelings will be there somebody may welcome somebody may oppose that will be there tomorrow also there may be some spontaneous opposition to this work from home when the difficulties start increasing or when there will be attacks they may be there but we i think as organizers who uh, who are leading a union or who are leading a movement we need to understand that what we we need to uh, foresee what can be the implication the foreseeing will be possible if we go into the details of what i said till now that what are the reasons for whose benefit are these being done and to with whom is the government for whom is the government uh, formulating policies these are important if we 
go uh, into that and try to understand that linking up the issues what the cit has always been saying is that all the issues that the workers or employees face they are in some way linked to the policies which are formulated by the government no issue is unrelated to the policies so we need to uh, study that how is it related why is this being done what will be the implication how the issue is connected to the policy and then explain that to the workers and then expose why the government is doing this for whose benefit is uh, the government doing this today uh, you might have uh, seen the peasants they have given a call to boycott ambani and adani uh, these corporations they are holding demonstrations in front of reliance petrol pumps they have given even a call uh to boycott geo i don't know how far it is possible or uh, practicable but that's a different thing but at least there is an effort and they are understanding it's not only the union leaders the farmer leaders that are saying that if you go to thikri border or singhu border talk to common farmers they are saying that this is what is happening in their villages and how uh, these corporates will almost uh, ruin them so that they understand so that type of thing if we can why he is doing why the government is doing like this was the previous government any different which are the governments what are the policies they are pursuing so these are very basic things we need to understand because today there is a situation with this type of attacks and with this type of resistance today there is a situation people all over the country are thinking about these issues they are facing these issues so this is the time we need to explain to them and bring them more uh, to understand the necessity for organization and organized resistance so i think this is a good beginning but in the it sector we need to do much more and try to organize them impress upon them convince them about the need to strengthen the organization because that is the only weapon we have to face this situation thank you thank you comrade uh, so uh, the document is out it is available in the unite it.org so people who wants to access the white paper can read it there and uh, as uh, comrade hemlata suggested we will improvise on that and uh, it is uh, beginning since nascom actively persistently pursuing to uh, do a law to bring out a law which would favor only them only the employers we we have started this and we have tried to uh, uh, take a initial step and uh, we will definitely along with the other uh, unions across uh, state kit u karnataka west bengal ai eu kerala telangana we will try to improve this and uh, try to collaborate and improve this so uh, and if anybody has any questions they can post it on the chat uh, we can take few questions comment can answer if required Yeah, welcome, Na. This is Rashegar. Welcome. Yeah, 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 Rashegar. You can ask the question. All right. Type on us on that. All right. Or all of it. Can't tell me. Can't tell me. Being. You can. You can. You can. Tell me. Can't tell me. Actually, the thing is, uh, two most questions which I had are this. So, as you said, welcome, Na. we are you from your end you approached the uh, employer labor office but they have not uh, given any proper reply they were has one sorry raaja ke solunga solunga adha இப்போ வந்து பார்த்தோம்னா நீங்க எம்ப்ளாய் லேபர் ஆபீஸ்ல வந்து ஒரு தடவை அப்ரோச் பண்ணீங்க ஆனா அவங்க வந்து பார்த்தோம்னா 
சரியான பதில் வந்து கொடுக்கல ஒரு முழுமையா முழுமையான ஒரு இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் வந்து கிடைக்கல அப்படின்னு சொல்லிடுறீங்க ஜஸ்ட் எம்ப்ளாயர்ஸ மட்டும் வச்சுட்டு பேசிட்டு இல்ல அந்த மாதிரிலாம் எந்த ஒரு ரிட்ரெச்மெண்ட்டுமே நடக்கவே இல்லைன்னு சொல்லியிருக்காங்க அப்படி இருக்கையில வந்து பாத்தோம்னா நியூஸ்ல வந்துலாம் நியூஸ்ல மத்தபடி என்ன சொல்றது நெட்ல எல்லாம் பாத்தோம்னா அவங்க ஓபன் கமிட்மெண்ட்டே கொடுத்துருக்காங்க இந்த மாதிரி லே ஆஃப் எல்லாம் நடக்குது அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு சோ இந்த மாதிரி ஒரு ப்ராப்பர் ரெஸ்பான்ஸ் வராத போது நம்ம வந்துட்டு மத்த யூனியன்ஸ் எல்லாரையுமே சேர்ந்துட்டு நம்ம யூனியன்ஸும் சேர்ந்துட்டு இல்ல கோர்ட்ல ஏதாவது ஒரு பெட்டிஷன் மாதிரியாவது கொடுக்க முடியுமா இல்ல இல்ல கேஸ் எதுவும் ஃபைல் பண்ண முடியுமா இல்ல ஏன்னா எம்ப்ளாய் லேபர் ஆஃபீஸ் அவங்க சைட்ல இருந்து எதுவும் வரா சரியான முழுமையான பதில் வராத போது தெளிவான பதில் இல்லாத போது சொல்றேன் ஓகே அது நான் கேக்குறேன் ஹேமந்த் அவர்கிட்ட கேக்குறேன் நம்பர் டூ இன்னொரு ஒரு கொஸ்டின் இன்னொரு ஒரு கொஸ்டின் கம்ப்ளீட் வெல்கின் ஒரே நிமிஷம் ராஜா கம்ப்ளீட் வெல்கின் யா கம்ப்ளீட் யா கம்ப்ளீட் இஃப் தேர் ஆர் நோ क्वेश्चंस ஃபார் மீ கேன் ஐ லீவ் இங்கே வாங்க யா இங்கே வாங்க யா யா கம்ப்ளீட் एक्चुअली ஒன் क्वेश्चन கேம் so uh-huh. rajasekar what he is asking is so the companies are continuously retrenching and uh, uh, though uh, we are reporting it to labor commissioner and uh, even uh, the companies itself are publicly announcing it in uh, medias uh, we are not able to do any change or we, do, we are not able to oppose them oppose the retrenchments so what can be the way out of it so is there any legal measures to follow is what is see question. comrade what i i told and i repeat is that the legal measures and this thing uh, is not always see the supreme court what type of judgments are coming we have to understand that today under neo liberalism this uh, thing the uh, only weapon of the employees is their collective strength so the legal things supreme court judgments you have seen in recent period several high courts you have seen and in tamil nadu also whether the supreme court itself when the employees were you don't have any right to strike that judgment is there so these earlier there were at least some pro worker judgments and how these legal uh, i mean these acts have come that also we have to understand so the legal uh, things benefits that we have these acts they have not come just like that they have come through the struggles united struggles of the workers earlier they were not there if you can go through the history of the working class in our country or in any country what were the conditions like 100 years back and how they have changed it is not through some individuals or some governments having some concern for the workers that they have prepared these laws so it is through the struggles only these benefits were enacted whatever provisions are there but how many it is implemented that also you see all these benefits to for how many where there is a organized strength when where the workers are able to collectively fight they are getting implemented where it is not there there is no guarantee that they will be implemented on individual labor commissioners or some labor officers it is up to them they can be interpreted and now onwards when the courts will come into force it will be even more confusing and even more difficult anybody can interpret in any way and many things are left ambiguously they say the courts in the provisions the rules say the concerned authority as appropriate these are the words so appropriate means what for whom who will decide what is appropriate so we cannot uh, depend on the legal provisions unless we have the organized strength unless we mobilize and force upon the, it is not possible means it depends if there is some good person there who wants but even then there will be lot of hurdles because the strength of the employers has increased they want to crush the employees and the workers that is the situation today comment uh, one more question 
uh, it's from Vivya. So uh, it's actually two questions. I'll combine into one. So as union, what sort of direction should uh, we take to protect women who are working from home? Because they are facing domestic violence. So. See, uh, domestic violence, first we have to create the confidence that the union is there to help them because many cases of domestic violence or even other types of sexual harassment, even at the workplace, they don't come to the notice of the union. Very few women would like to talk even to their colleague, women colleagues. So if the union, by taking up that question, by creating awareness that the union is there, whenever some issue comes, we have to take and mobilize against that. And whatever legal provisions are there possible, we'll try to utilize, but that will create a confidence. And when that confidence is there, more women will join the union. And if more people join the union, our strength will increase. And about this patriarchy, patriarchal values in society, awareness needs to be created both among women and men also, among men and also among women about the patriarchal values because they are also sometimes victims of that. So uh, it is only through these that we can uh, organize women and uh, we have to uh, bring them into the organized uh, movement. So I think Yes, workshops in offices, all these things can be done, workshops in offices or uh, any union offices. From Hindu, pay gaps in men and women, can you, union help? Yeah, in all the issues, it's not only pay gaps, what I'm saying is, you have to, union have to take up all these issues pay gaps, you have been taking the uh, cases of uh, maternity leave, maternity benefits, sexual harassment also you have uh, been taking up. So it, whether it is women specific issues like pay gaps or uh, childcare benefits or maternity health or all these things. And also the other issues, whether it is work from home or retrenchment or uh, uh, pay cuts, etc. All these things are issues that the union has to take up. Okay, so, wait, so I think we are, uh, sorry, okay, so I think, uh, what is it, like final employees, I think. Okay, so, uh, so uh, I think there are no more questions. So thank you for uh, your time, Ramit. So we will take forward as you suggested. And uh, as we told, organizing employees as an organization is the only way forward. So yeah. we'll work towards that and uh, we'll, uh, we know what the rights come. Thank you. Okay, comrade. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.